Welcome, and thank you very much for coming. My name is Jan McFarish. I am the Education and Events Director of the Free Speech Union. Uh, this is our first foray into Northern Ireland, and uh, when we first started planning this meeting, I was talking to the venue about having about 100 people, maybe 80 to 100. I thought maximum 120. Um, based on the numbers that we, of members we know we've got over here in Northern Ireland and particularly in the Belfast area, but also based on our other regional speakeasies that we've organised up until now in Edinburgh, Manchester, Exeter, Oxford, Cambridge. Um, and the fact that over 200 people <laughs> um, are here tonight, and this is the biggest of our regional events, uh, in fact, so the biggest of the events that we've ever organised outside of London, uh, and bigger than a lot of our London events, actually, as well. I'm not sure if that's a terrible thing and a sign of how appalling things are over here for free speech or whether that's a sign of a wonderful thing, which is there's a very large body of people who are clearly very concerned about the state of free speech in Northern Ireland and are prepared to come out on a Friday night, discuss it, and hopefully are already taking a stand in its defence. So we'll find out as the evening goes on, I think, which of those two things is true. Um, uh, just a few thank yous before we get going. Uh, thank you, first of all, to the Battle of Ideas Festival for partnering on this event. If you, some of you may have been across to London for that festival that takes place every year at end of October, early November. Ella Whelan is uh, key in organising that, and you'll hear from more, her more uh, in a moment. And to uh, Andrea, down the front here, who is, is the person who said to us, you've got to come over to Belfast. Um, and not, she didn't just invite us, she's been absolutely instrumental in making this event happen. And also gave my husband and I a tour around um, the city yesterday uh, with her husband, and, uh, and then gave Toby Young a tour around uh, with my colleague Vinay Kapoor today as well, which is absolutely fascinating for us. Um, and uh, just uh, incredible to be welcomed in, in that kind of way. She also gave me a bottle of vodka, which was always a, always a good thing. Um, and uh, now I can't see. Um, <laughs> uh, and then also to um, uh, a local member who helped us financially with this event. It is quite pricey, obviously, to put on these things and to get everybody here and to get staff from London over. Uh, so that was very, very welcome. We'd like to thank um, uh, him. Uh, he's very modest, so he's remaining anonymous. And, uh, and also to our volunteers, Rob at the door there from Manchester, who's come over to help us out, and Felice, who's hiding behind a pillar. Um, she's come up from, from Dublin uh, to help us out as well. So that's incredibly uh, uh, helpful for us, because we're a very small team, really, and we're all based, we're based all over the UK, but nobody's based over here yet. Um, and of course, we'd like to thank our, think, our speakers, uh, who I'll introduce in a moment. And then finally, uh, after the thank yous, there's an apology, which is from Andrew Doyle, who I know was very, very keen to be here and was instrumental again in getting this off the ground and was very helpful in recommending speakers that we should definitely invite to join our panel. But unfortunately, he then had a work project in America that he's had to uh, go and see to this, this weekend which I'm told involves him and Graham Linehan. So I'm sure that will be a very interesting one to watch out for. Um, so how tonight will work. Um, we'll hear from each of our speakers in a moment, and I'll introduce them all to you first. Um, and then it's um, over to you, basically. We've got plenty of time to hear from you, for you to respond to what you hear from the panel, but then also to raise additional concerns of your own, additional perspectives, to ask straightforward questions if that's what you'd prefer. Uh, we are filming, um, so Paul, our cameraman, has, has come with us to film that, but we're not live streaming, and then we'll, um, we'll put out, uh, we probably won't even edit it, but if we have to, if there's any technical problems, we edit the videos a little bit, and then we put them up on our website, which has just been revamped. You can find that at freespeechunion.org, um, and then all of our uh, events uh, generally go up there very quickly within a couple of days. Um, after we've finished in here, I will talk a bit more about this at the end, but you can talk to us, talk to Toby, me, Vinay, about... Um, where's Vinay? He's out there. So Vinay, <laughs> he's consigned to, the, to deal with the stragglers, but you can talk to any of us about joining the Free Speech Union, what the benefits of membership are, how you go about doing it. It's very simple. 
Uh, and also we're selling these uh, tote bags, which you get free if you join tonight. Otherwise, you can pay £10 for them. They've got really wonderful free speech quotes on them. So I think that's, that's it from me, other, to, other than to introduce our speakers. First of all, you'll hear from uh, Geoffrey Dudgeon, who's over there. Uh, some of you, will, I'm sure, will, will know Geoffrey. So Jeff uh, has held office in the Northern Ireland Gay Rights Association since its foundation in 1975. And if you Google Jeff, you'll find his fascinating history, which I have to say was, was unbelievably interesting from a free speech and a, and a kind of freedom and privacy point of view. Uh, he led landmark campaigns for gay rights and personal freedom. He was awarded an MBE in the 2012 Honours List for services to the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender community in Northern Ireland. Uh, between 2014 and 2019, he served as an Ulster Unionist councillor to Belfast City Council and was chair of the council's diversity working group, which I did ask him about earlier uh, when we spoke last week. Uh, and he's written books on Roger Casement and uh, H. Montgomery Hyde. Uh, then we will hear from Stella O'Malley, uh, Stella is a psychotherapist, a writer, public speaker and a parent with many years experience working as a mental health, uh, mental health professional. We had a fascinating conversation over lunch today, comparing notes. Uh, she's written a whole number of books, uh, including Cottonwool Kid, Kid, sorry, Cottonwool Kids, Bullyproof Kids, Fragile, uh, What Your Teen Is Trying To Tell You, uh, and she co-authored the recent When Kids Say They're Trans book, which I really recommend to everybody. Uh, Stella was born in Dublin, and she now lives in County Offaly uh, with her husband and two children, where she runs her private uh, clinical practice. Uh, then we'll hear from Ella, we Ella Whelan. Ella is a journalist and author of What Women Want, Fun, Freedom and an End to Feminism. That whether you hold by that now that you've become a mother. You wrote that pre-motherhood. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's uh, the co-convener of the Battle of Ideas Festival, as I said earlier, which is a free speech public forum organised by the Academy of Ideas. She's also the commissioning editor of Letters on Liberty, a radical pamphleteering campaign for the 21st century. And Ella is a columnist for Spiked and writes for a variety of newspapers and regularly appears on TV and radio. Then we will go to David Quinn. David has been a newspaper columnist in Ireland since 1994. Currently, he writes a weekly column in the Sunday Independent, and his column has previously appeared in the Sunday Times, Ireland, the Irish Independent, and the Sunday Business Post. He frequently appears on radio and television programmes and has contributed to numerous publications overseas, including The Spectator and Unheard. He's appeared on Free Speech Nation with Andrew Doyle, discussing free speech issues in the Republic of Ireland, and he's founder and CEO of the Iona Institute. Now we're going to move on to, after that, we're going to move on to Simon Chambers, who's at, at the end there. Uh, so Simon is a recent addition to the panel, but we thought we can't uh, have this meeting without him joining the panel. It would be silly, given the news of this week. Um, so Simon has been a litigation specialist and a problem solver for nearly 25 years. Um, he's based just outside Belfast in Newtonards. I asked for the pronunciation of that, so I may have got that wrong still, at Russell and Company Solicitors. He's a member of the Law Society Council uh, and has taken on many high-profile litigation cases over the years, the latest of which is the turfed out action by 23 litigants and the case of Sarah Morrison uh, um, versus Belfast Film Festival, which he will talk to us about in more detail, I'm sure will be discussed uh, from the floor. And then finally, we'll go to uh, Toby Young. So Toby is the General Secretary and founder of the Free Speech Union. And we, in case you don't know, the Free Speech Union is a non-partisan mass membership public interest body that stands up for the free speech rights of its members. Uh, Toby also co-founded the West London Free School and is the author of four books, the best known of which is How to Lose Friends and Alienate People. <laughs> Uh, and he's the associate editor of The Spectator, where he's written a weekly column since 1998. And he also runs a blog called thedailyskeptic.org that has received over 40 million page views. Toby's a very busy man, so we're, I was really delighted that he was so keen to come over to Belfast and uh, take part in this event. So, okay, now I have to remember who I was going to start with. Uh, Jeffrey, if you want to kick us off. I've asked all the speakers just to give us five minutes to kick things off. 
And I've asked them all to kind of describe what they think is the most pressing free speech issue that concerns them most in Northern Ireland. Jeffrey. Right. Um, thanks, thanks very much, Jan. Uh, I'd like to welcome the Free Speech Union to Belfast, the birthplace of identity politics. <laughs> I'm especially pleased to be on a panel with such distinguished campaigners from England and the south of Ireland. And uh, it's wonderful to see so many people in the room tonight. As such a turnout indicates how great a need there is for people of like mind on these issues to have a home. That people are here in such numbers is itself a victory for free speech. It also reveals a big hole in Northern Ireland politics not met by any political parties. So significantly, so far, the state broadcaster has run a mile from reporting this event. In, in truth, we have no real culture of human rights. Instead, they're weaponized to the detriment of free speech. Northern Ireland is a seedbed, a laboratory or testing ground for so much that has come to predominate in London and, and, and beyond. We have a panoply of commissions on rights, equality, parading, with all the same individuals popping up interchangeably as commissioners but none are devoted to free speech. The European Convention on Human Rights is regularly invoked and used for anti-state purposes. The Convention articles on freedom of expression, freedom of religion, numbers nine and 10, barely get a mention, and certainly not in academia, where the Article Two dogma alone prevails. The Asher's case is one exception, but it took the Supreme Court in London to address the compelled speech aspect. Our courts are instead clogged with legacy cases involving the rewriting of history, which is why I've devoted the last five years of my life in the Malone House legacy group, which I convene, to arguing the case for drawing a line, putting the past behind us. It goes unsayable and unsaid, but since 1998, we've had already a series of amnesties. So politics here are largely done through human rights with one-sided lawfare rampant. Rights are used instead to advance identity. Very little of the old liberal secular element remains. That's just a fact and the reality. How to get around that is a conundrum we could address here. We've had many free speech battles in the recent past and if the stacked up legislation awaiting Stormont's return is anything to go by, on hate speech and conversion therapy, for instance, many more to come. In March, Southern voters have to answer two related questions in a needless referendum. Uh, the first is whether to remove a somewhat outdated reference to women from the Constitution, one that's actually the only reference to women in the Constitution. The second would redefine the family as anything you want it to be. With defeat looming on these referendums, uh, at my maybe the high tide mark of uh, Irish identitarianism, our uh, speakers from the south, I don't want to preempt their, their points, so uh, I'll leave it at that. But it's hard to believe, in a sense, who knows, even Canada could peak next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, previously, the Free Speech Union intervened in the then pending hate speech legislation being developed by Naomi Long, who was Minister of Justice, following the Marinan Report, which was intent on illegalizing private conversations. FSU commissioned an opinion poll from Lucid Talk on the matter, and the result was serious criticism of the proposal. But I fear that view will have little purchase once Stormont is back, given the constitution, uh, the composition of its members. The centrist alliance party is conflicted on free speech, but wokery and authoritarianism predominates as unthought through legislation is pressed home. I have to say it's the free speech aspect of the trans issue and the cruelty of cancellation, particularly in employment, that has drawn me into a form of resistance. Where Gay was concerned, I was unaware of how matters were changing and creeping up on, on me. I innocently participated in the corporate takeover of the issue, speaking to several financial institutions for, for a small fee. Uh, 
I was more pleased at the apparent thoughtfulness involved, but silently gay disappeared from gay pride and I did.